Good morning. It is November 6th, Wednesday, and I am in Curio Bay, and I'm going to go on a hike to a petrified forest. So let's go see if we can see any really scared trees. <laughs> incredible example of a petrified forest and petrified here meaning turned to stone. So 160 million years ago this area was covered with only trees. Birds and grass and flowers didn't even exist back then. Just up along the mainland there was a large volcanic explosion. Tons of rainwater washed all of the volcanic ash into this area in huge flash floods. The wood here was saturated by the silica infused water, which silica comes from volcanic ash, and quickly turned all of the wood and forest that was in this area to stone. And usually forests that this happens to, they decay to some extent, but here it happened over like a course of a couple, like some months or just a few years that everything completely turned to stone. So when you look around at the stone here that is ancient wood, you can still see the bark and the tree rings in it. Some of the rock formations just look like tree stumps. It's absolutely fascinating. I will show you all kinds of great footage right now. <laughs> and then surrounding all of the petrified wood are these stunning tide pools. The erosion from the ocean is what exposed the petrified wood that we can see today. So behind me, you can see one of the trees that through the flooding was pushed over, laid down on its side and turned to stone. The whole tree length is, is still all right here. <laughs> tree stump, tree stump, tree stump, tree stump, tree stump, tree stump. If you can't tell already, I love rocks and this is just blowing my mind. <laughs> definitely think I'm here during low tide. There's a lot of kelp. Kelp me Obi-Wan Kenobi, you're my only help. Making that joke again in just in case you didn't hear it the time I did it before. Very cool. So this is just driftwood. But it looks almost the same. I actually had to poke it just to make sure, but not 160 million years old. <laughs> So this petrified forest used to be the home of one of the rarest penguins in the world and that there used to be a colony that lived here and they'd breed here and raise their chicks here but unfortunately in the last couple years they stopped coming here so there's still all the signage and such about it listed on google maps that this is there's penguins here there's a penguin walk but unfortunately the penguins no longer come here hopefully we're gonna keep looking for penguins along the way so let's hop in the car and keep going
So this is a really unique example of a living forest right next to a petrified forest. So it was barely a three minute walk to then get to this track that I'm on now. I feel like I've completely stepped into a jungle after driving through lots and lots of farmland here. So these are direct descendants of the trees that were petrified millions and millions of years ago, just on the beach, not three to five minutes away. So really unique to get to experience the modern day ancestors of the rocks, the rock trees, the petrified trees that I just saw. So that bird there is called a tui and they are recognizable by the fluffs of white feathers underneath their chin, but even more recognizable by the really unique sounds that they make and that they are able to mimic noises similar to mockingbirds. So after a lovely drive on the Southland Scenic Route, I've arrived here in Dunedin and I'm at the Royal Albatross Center and we're gonna do a penguin tour. Now, if you think about all the penguins that you know of in the world, whether it's from nature documentaries or even from cartoons, and then have a look at Peter. What's the difference? The colour. All the other ones are black and white. <laughs> These guys are the only penguins in the world that are.
fucking penguins in the road. Oh my gosh. Come on, buddies. You gotta, you gotta go. Good morning. It is November 7th and we are here in Dunedin out by the beach. And we're gonna do some exploring in town and out and about and around the surrounding areas before heading back to Queenstown for this evening. So unfortunately with my work schedule, I did have to leave Dunedin earlier than I expected to, but along my road trip back to Queenstown, I'm gonna stop at some cute little towns along the way. So here we are in Waihola Lake. I might be pronouncing that wrong. It's Maori for spreading waters. So beautiful lake behind me. After a bit of a rushed drive back to Queenstown and then a very exhausting shift at work, I have safely made it back to my bed, back at home, and completed the journey that is my little South Lens road trip. Total kilometers for the entire drive, and that isn't including Stewart Island because I wasn't driving then, was 966 kilometers, which is equal to exactly 600 miles. So overall, a really amazing road trip. I wish I could have been three times as long and I could have got to spend more time in each place, especially would have liked to have spent more time in Dunedin and gotten to see the actual city from where I was camping to uh, where the Albatross Center was, was quite the drive. So didn't have a lot of time to spend in the city itself. So that'll just have to be for next road trip. But overall, such a fun area to explore. The Catlins were incredible. Love going through those New Zealand rainforests. Seeing the waterfalls was stunningly beautiful. And of course, all the wildlife along the way was such a treat to experience. Definitely didn't expect to spend so much time at the Petrified Forest, but totally got lost in checking out all those cool rocks and fossils. New trees and old trees along the way. Thanks for coming along on this adventure with me, and we'll see you for the next one.